So in this video, I'm going to be installing OpenSUSE and this will be Tumbleweed with the latest KDE Plasma 6 in a desktop computer. So this is the OpenSUSE website. So I'm going to download Tumbleweed. So I'm going to download the 64-bit edition and this is for desktops. I'm going to download the offline image. I'll click on download. So the size of the ISO file is 4.2 gigs. I'm going to be using Etcher to create the bootable USB drive. This is the Etcher website. I'm going to download the exe file. And this is for Windows. So I have the Etcher exe file on my desktop as well as the OpenSUSE ISO file. So I'm going to open Etcher. I'll click flash from file. I'll select the OpenSUSE ISO file. And I'm going to click on flash and it's creating the bootable USB drive. So the size of the USB drive that I'm using is 16 gigabytes. So the bootable USB drive was completed and now I'm going to take this USB drive and boot up the desktop computer. So I booted up the computer. I'm going to choose the USB drive to boot up from. So on this page, I'm going to select installation. So it's initializing network configuration. Okay, so this is the language keyboard and license agreement. So in the language section, you can change your language here. The keyboard layout, you can also select whatever language you would like. And here you can type a keyboard test. So I'm going to click next. So this is the system probing. So this is for online repositories. Enabling the online repositories during installation gives you access to all software that does not fit on the installation media anymore. Additionally, those repositories might contain updated software packages. Do you want to activate online repositories now? I'm going to select yes. So these are a list of the online repositories. And you can select how many you would like here. So I'm going to leave these four selected. I'm going to click next. So this is the system role. System roles are predefined use cases which tailor the system for the selected scenario. So you can choose your desktop environment here. There's also for server and transactional server. I'm going to select desktop with KDE Plasma. That's the desktop environment I want installed. I'm going to click next. So this is the disk configuration and this is the suggested partitioning. So if you don't know how to partition your disk, you can leave it like this, suggested partitioning, and it breaks it down. So the size of the hard drive in the desktop computer that I'm installing OpenSUSE in is one terabyte. So I'm going to select guided setup. And yes, choose what to do with existing Windows system. I don't have any Windows system in the drive. I'm going to leave it as resize or remove as needed. So this option, there's nothing, is grayed out. So this option says, choose what to do with other partitions. Do not modify, remove if needed, or remove even if not needed. I'm going to leave it as remove if needed. Click next. So this is a partitioning scheme. I'm going to select Enable Logical Volume Management. So if you want to encrypt the disk, you can select this, Enable Disk Encryption. I'm going to select Next. So these are the settings for the root LVM logical volume, file system type. This is the default. BTRFS, you have all these other options. I'm going to leave it as default. So this checkbox says Enable Snapshots. I'm going to uncheck it. You can leave it checked if you want snapshots. And this option says propose separate home LVM logical volume. I'm going to select that. And this is the file system type. I'm going to leave it at XFS. So this checkbox says propose separate swap LVM logical volume. I'm going to leave it checked. This other option says enlarge to RAM size for suspend. I'm going to leave it as default unchecked. I'll click next. And this is a summary of the guided setup. I'm going to click next. 
So this is the clock and time zone settings. It's already detected that I'm in New York. In the region section, you can click the drop down tab and select your country here. The time zone, you can select your time zone here. There's other settings. So here is change date and time. You can also configure this manually. This is a synchronized with NTP server. This is the default NTP server here. This is the source site. And this is the NTP source address. There's a drop down tab here and you can select any one of these. I'm going to leave it as is. Click accept. So I'm going to click next. So this is the local user. You have to create a user. So in the user's full name, I'm going to type John. Username, I'm going to leave it as John. I'm going to type a short password for this demonstration. You can type a longer password if you would like. So there are two options here. Use this password for system administrator and automatic login. You can also skip user creation. I'm going to uncheck automatic login. I'm going to uncheck this. Use this password for system administrator. I'm going to click next. So it gives a warning that the password is too simple and it's too short. I'm still going to use it. I'm going to select yes. So on this page, you have to enter a password for the root user. I'm going to type a simple password. You can also test keyboard layout here. There's this option here, import public SSH key. I'm going to leave it as default. Click next. I'm going to select yes. I'm going to use that password. So this is the installation settings. This is a summary and it says here, click a headline to make changes. So you can make changes to any one of these just by clicking on a headline. For example, network configuration. So I'm going to click on install. Click install again. And it's installing. Okay, so it's done. I'm going to click OK. So I get the login screen. I'm going to type the password. And so this is the welcome page. So I'm going to skip this and I'm going to uncheck this show on next startup. I'm going to close this. So this is the desktop. So this is the home folder and the trash. They are there by default. So this is the panel. So I'll click on the application launcher. And this can be adjusted. So there's favorites. This is all applications and these are all the applications. LibreOffice is also installed. So on the panel, so this is the virtual desktop here. There's only two. This is system settings. And there's mouse and touchpad, keyboard, touchscreen, multimedia, game control, graphics, tablet, sound, display and monitor. These are the connected devices. You can configure a printer here. So this is Wi-Fi and networking. This is online account and you can add new accounts here. You can add a Gmail account. This is colors and teams. So this is colors. And there's a list of colors here and you can choose any one of these. You can also choose a custom color and there's also install from file and get new. And you can download it from the internet. You can install it. This is the wallpaper. I'm going to select this color tree. Click apply. So this is Windows management. This is Windows behavior. So I'm going to activate the cube feature in SUSE. So to do that, you must be in Windows management, select desktop effects, and you want to scroll down. So under Windows management, this is cube and it has to be enabled. It's disabled by default. So I'm going to check the box. 
I'm going to click apply and I'm going to select virtual desktops. So right now there are two virtual desktops and there are two rows. This is it here, two virtual desktops and two rows. So to add additional desktop, I just have to click add. I'm going to select one row. Click apply. And this is how it shows. So to activate the cube using the keyboard, I'm using a Windows keyboard. You just have to hold down the Windows key and the C key. And this is how it shows. So I'm going to right click the panel. Here you can enter edit mode, you can add widgets, you can configure the icons, only task manager, show alternatives. So I'm going to select add widgets. And here you can add widgets. You can also search for new widgets here to download. So I'm going to select a widget here and I'm going to drag it to the desktop. I'm going to drag the calculator. And you can adjust the size. You can also rotate it. So to get back to top panel, you just right click the panel or you can just right click the desktop and select enter edit mode. And you can configure desktop on wallpaper here. I'm going to right click the desktop again, select configure display settings and you can change the resolution here. There's also the software center app and you can download new software apps here. So you can also configure the panel to be on the left or on the right, you just right click the panel, select enter edit mode. You can change the size of the panel. Right now it's at 44. I can increase the size here and decrease it. And you can change the position of the panel. For example, I'm going to click here, set position, and you get these arrows here. So if I want the panel to be on the left, I just have to click on this arrow. I'll click on set position again. So I can click on this arrow. So the panel will be on the right side. I'm going to leave it as default. So I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank you for subscribing.